dairy cattle of all the livestock species are probably the calmest of all the cattle that we have to work with and are very easy to train. Part of it's because of the way these cattle are raised. Uh, they are pulled from their mothers and, and managed by humans from the start and they are very easy and docile to work with. So that makes them a, an ideal project for a young person. Now it's very important when you're starting to think about selecting a project for a young person that they match up with the animal. Uh, these heifers are very well matched to the young ladies that are holding them. You, they can always push over you, run over you if they're startled. Dairy cattle are probably the least likely to kick, but it's always a possibility, particularly when you're starting the training process on these cattle. So you do have to be careful about that. But try to stay in, in front of the animals like they are right here, have control of their head, and avoid those feet. One thing we always have to be conscious of when we're working with livestock is to understand how they see in their depth perception. When you're standing on the side of an animal, an animal can see you, but their depth perception is not very good. The only way they can focus is to actually get both eyes, just like a human, and focus on something in front of them. There's kind of a blind spot right in front of the animal, and they have to look down and put their head down a lot of times to focus on things. So you want to make sure that they're comfortable with you, and we, we deal with the Flight zone of cattle and dairy cattle have a smaller flight zone because of the way they're raised and imprinted on humans early in their life. So their flight zone is much smaller and allows the people to work next to the front of the cattle and very close to them earlier than we did perhaps with beef cattle. So this is one area where it's an advantage for young people to be working with these cattle. They're not as likely to try to, to run away from them and jerk away from them in the training process. With any animal, we have to be concerned about what we'd call danger points. Uh, regardless of how gentle they are, how tame they are, we have to respect several things about cattle. And the dangerous things about an animal is body mass. They may be small calves, but they're still bigger than the people that are leading them. If they're startled or for any reason happen to jump forward or sideways, they can knock a person down. The other aspect that we have to be thoughtful of is their feet. The front feet from stepping on you, we're leading these animals up close to their front end. So if they misstep or we misstep, they can step on your feet. There's been numerous occasions where people have broken toes and feet by animals stepping on them. These smaller animals normally won't break a foot, but if they get bigger, and that's once again matching the animal with the exhibitor, you don't want a small child leading a big animal. They're much more easily stepped on. Their arms are shorter, so they wind up staying closer to the animal. The back legs, most of the time, the way we show and exhibit uh, dairy cattle, we're not in danger of being stepped on by the back feet if we're in the proper position. But if they happen to lurch forward or jerk you down, then they can step on you. The other aspect of it in kicking is a big issue in the grooming process. Not many exhibitors are ever kicked while they're exhibiting a dairy animal, but if you're grooming one and happen to startle them or uh, they're not used to it yet, they can reach out and strike with that back foot. So the kicking is one area that we really are concerned with, particularly with young individuals working with animals. That leads us to another point on safety. We don't ever want particularly young ladies like these working these animals by themselves. We always want a parent or somebody supervising that activity. And even just for a short moment, uh, injury can occur to that uh, individual which will affect them in the way they handle and work with livestock for the rest of their life. So we want to make sure that we have supervision anytime we're working with livestock. Very little equipment's actually needed to exhibit these cattle and prepare them for show. The little halters that we have on these heifers fit very nicely. They're the appropriate halter for the age of the calf. They're tied around the nose, they're tied under the throat latch area, and they won't slip off of that heifer if they were to set back or the young ladies pull on those halters. So that's what we'd like to see. The lead ropes are very appropriate as well. It's soft so it doesn't hurt their hands. They have a large rope, a very sturdy snap as well. These young ladies are holding them coiled up in their hands. Uh, they're safer that way. We'd always like to keep that uh, draped between the, the halter and her hand where it's not draped down quite that far. And that way when it's dropped down there, she can't step on that rope 
and get her feet tangled up and fall down. We don't use uh, show sticks in the dairy cattle, so anytime we get into keeping these cattle calm, it's gonna be a scratching effect on their neck. We might just reach up and touch these animals and scratch on them to keep them calm. And when we go to exhibiting them, they're gonna be exhibited in a very slow manner to where we actually are facing the cattle, unlike it is in some species, and lead them very slow around the, the ring. It's a very different process than it is in a lot of the other uh, haltered classes. When we're placing a halter on an animal, we want to make sure that we have them caught where we can at least restrain them. And I like using the end of the lead rope to do that as approach an animal, drape that lead rope over their neck, and then be able to hold that to kind of secure them until we're ready to put the halter on. Once I do that, then I'll reach under their neck with these particular halters, bring it up over their nose and you want to make sure it's tight enough. So always make sure they're pretty snug when you put them on. They come up under the chin, up under the jaw and the throat latch area in these calves. And this halter fits very appropriate for this, this calf. Once we get the halter on, then we can pull our lead rope off and be ready to lead the animal. When we start teaching these animals to lead, we want to make sure that they are ready to lead. This little heifer is not paying a lot of attention to what I'm doing with the halter. She's very curious. I want to be careful about getting her accustomed to doing that and it being all right. That's something if we were exhibiting the animal would be a problem. So we want them to respect our position. So if she keeps doing that, I'm probably going to need to discipline her at least a little bit to keep her from doing that. But I don't sure don't want to be mean to her, but I'm going to just pull her head away from me a little bit to try to keep her from trying to lick me because that's something we don't want them to do. As a young person, it's fun to do that, push on their head and mess with their head and scratch their head. The natural instinct of an animal, if you push on their head, they're gonna push against you and that starts them to learn to butt an individual or push on an individual and you don't want that to happen. So if I'm gonna start leading this little heifer, I need to get her to where she's off balance a little bit. So I'll pull her from one side to the other and just get her to coming toward me a little bit if she wants to stop, that's fine, we'll just start over. But once again, if you can keep them off balance, and this is a place where a youngster would sure want an adult supervising that process, but once again, we may have to pull them side to side to get them to move and get them off balance. When you stop them, you wanna turn and face them and hold their head up. Now, when we're exhibiting dairy cattle, it's different. And so we teach them to lead like we would any other animal but once we start showing those animals, they're gonna wind up taking them a little closer to the head and they move them very slowly. So you have to really teach those cattle to lead slow and precisely. And then when you stop, try to st set them up just a little bit. And like I said, these are very young heifers and just starting to work with them. But as they, if they get a little nervous, tend to scratch them on the neck or under the chin, which will calm these cattle down very quickly. And one thing we haven't talked about is what to do if an animal tries to bolt and run away. We've talked about that being a, a possibility. If you are big enough, one thing you can do is if they run off, they're gonna be going past you. And I kind of like to squat and put my hip into them. Now this young lady may not big enough, be big enough to do that, but you don't wanna try to stand right beside them and pull back on them or they can drag you. So the main thing you wanna try to do is to turn their nose just a little bit. But that's what we'd like to try to do is to slow them down, get them to turning rather than running straight off. Keep your legs bent, pull back, and try to pull her around. If she ever gets you tipped forward though, that's when I say turn loose. 